All right, and we're live once again. <laughs> okay, I'm um, sorry about that. Um, I tried doing a live video earlier, but uh, it just wasn't uh, working out. The stream kind of kind of crapped on me midway through thought, so I just ended up deleting it all together. But anyway, if you guys are watching this for the first time, hi, Andy here. And I'm um, just sitting here at McDonald's, um, sipping on my water, things like that. And I got the car on because my phone's getting kind of low on, on battery life, and I just want to make sure everything's all good with that. And it's starting to get a little hot in here, too. I think I might... Oop, by the way. <laughs> We're live, pal. Might just end up uh, cracking the window up top. All right. So you might get some more lens flare action, but... Uh, Ooh, that's real nice. Uh, I should have done that earlier. I'm starting to sweat in here already. And it's not even that uh, that warm out outside. It's just all the light and stuff coming in here is heating up the car. So that's nice. Anyway, apologies for the engine noise and all sorts of stuff. But let's get into the video because I've been doing all the disclaimer crap for like a minute now. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update on uh, what's going on with me uh, college-wise. I uh, just wanted to let you know what's what's going on as far as that goes from my last video. So uh, the plan is to first go to a community college to help uh, get things going as far as getting myself ready for the transfer out to a an overseas school in Japan. And there's seven reasons why, just a couple, well, a couple reasons why I'm going to excuse me, uh, a community college before uh, just going to university overseas instead of just, like, going to it right away. Man, <laughs> this is a jumbled fucking mess. Ugh, sorry if you guys are watching the first couple minutes of this. This is why I edit my vlogs, but, you know, I ain't got, I ain't got time for that right now. So, in any event, we just kind of have to deal. So, a um, couple reasons why I want to go to a community college right away versus just going straight to an overseas university. Uh, one of them is to boost my GPA so I'll have a better chance at getting accepted to that school because um, Lakeland has a you know pretty high acceptance rate so I'm not like super worried about Lakeland but I still want to give myself a good chance so they're not like iffy on accepting me. Uh, but on the other hand, Temple has, um, I wouldn't say it has a low acceptance rate, but it has a much lower acceptance rate than what most people might think. So you do have to kind of try to uh, to get in there. But I've also heard stories of people with just shitty grades, and for some reason or other, they end up getting into Temple. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the case may be, but in any event, I just want to make sure that I give myself the best chance possible to be accepted so I don't have to worry about... I got a notification on Twitter. We'll get to you later. Anyway, I just want to make sure I got uh, the best possible chance to uh, get accepted so I don't have to plunk down all that money for an application fee on a, eh, maybe, <laughs> sort of shot, um, which is another big thing. You know, with, with Temple, it's not so bad. It's about hundred and some odd dollars USD, however it shakes out, depending on the exchange rate. Uh, but with Lakeland, it's much higher. It's like 350 USD and some change. So I want to make sure that I have a pretty good shot and I have, you know, transcripts and everything all lined up. So when I do transfer out there, we're good to go and I have a pretty good shot at getting accepted. <laughs> so... Uh, that's one of the reasons. Um, another reason is that I need to save up money because, yes, the GI Bill does pay for college. Yes, the GI Bill does give me a housing allowance every month. But at best, it kicks in about a month into your courses. So you, you do have to have some kind of a savings or a job or something to kind of help cover for those initial expenses until the GI Bill kicks in. And plus, uh, I've heard lately that there's been some payment issues with some of the veterans going to school as of late. I don't know if that's just a, you know, just like a random thing or 
if it's something else, but I have heard some stories about it, so I just want to make sure I have a little bit of savings in case something like that happens, because again, you know, being overseas, I can't exactly go over to, to mommy and daddy's house and ask for some money, you know, uh, I'm a little far away, so, um, and, you know, like I said, have money saved up, of course, for the plane ticket as well, um, I want to make sure we're good to go on that before I, you know, commit to transferring over there. That's a big thing. Um, and the application fee, like I said, living expenses till the GI Bill kicks in. And also just savings in general because uh, you never know what's going to happen. You never know if you're going to take a dip on the, on the GI Bill. And plus holidays really affect it because you only get paid for days that school's in session. So for like spring break or winter break or something like that, you really take a pretty big hit as far as the GI Bill goes. So you have to be prepared for that sort of thing. And um, like I said before, um, under a student visa in Japan, you can only work so many hours a week. And you know, during regular school time, that's you know an okay amount of hours. I can definitely get by, you know, with the GI Bill working properly and me you know, getting those hours and stuff, I can get by just fine. But it's when these little changes and stuff happen that, you know, I have to be cognizant of that and not go over my uh, allotted time during the week. So just something to keep in mind, you know, in situations like that. And plus, you know, like I said, I want to go out and see Japan. So I'm gonna, gonna kind of need some form of money uh, to do that, you know, even, even if it's just, you know, cruising and perusing in Tokyo. Um, gotta have the mons, or the mons, I guess, <laughs> in Japan's case, to, uh, to do that. Um, and, you know, one less thing I gotta worry about, really. Um, so, another reason that I wanna go to community college first versus just going straight to the overseas university is to also, in some way, kind of test the waters as far as going back to a college environment, see if I can, I can do it. Because uh, for those of you who've been following my channel or just my exploits online, I guess, um, you know, because I've been shifting channels and stuff. But anyway, um, for those of you who've been following me for a while, um, you'll know that I had a kind of a rough go of it um, going back to college uh, this time around. Because uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, mental unpacking to do once I got out of the military. And it was hard for me to make a lot of uh, adjustments in life. And you know, I had a lot of hangups about college and just the area I was at. I wasn't a super big fan of Kalamazoo. I felt in a lot of ways isolated because you know, I didn't have family out there. And you know, I was really distant from my work friends because they were a lot younger than me. And even though that didn't really matter to them, it, you know, really mattered to me because it just kind of you know is part of a whole self-esteem issue that I have so again it was nothing that they did or said or anything it was just it was all it was all me it was all I had that's something you know I've, I've come to realize about why I failed up in Michigan and you know I just want to make sure that I I do good this time because I only have so much time on the GI Bill I can't just be you know fucking up classes and stuff and expect to get anywhere in life because you know I got this opportunity to uh, to succeed and to to get my degree get that paper so I can uh, get that work visa to work abroad in Japan and even if that you know working abroad in Japan thing doesn't work out for me I still have a degree to to fall back on so I can use that to help me apply for jobs out here in the States for uh, for what it's worth even though a degree nowadays doesn't mean as much as it used to. But still, it's nice to have on a resume. And also, for me, since I've been pursuing it for so long, it's, it's also just an accomplishment in and of itself. Because, um, you know, for those who have been following me for a short period of time, um, I went to college at, you know, traditional college age. Uh, first went out to ITT Technical Institute back when they were still around. They've since foreclosed, <laughs> which I guess kind of shows um, 
the state of that, but you know, when I went, it wasn't quite as bad. Um, I went in 2000, from 2004 to 2006, so yeah, I know, I'm an old guy, whatever, but um, went from then to then, and uh, you know, I was commuting, and I was also basically working full time at uh, McDonald's as well. So funny how funny how that works. But uh, yeah, so I was just doing a whole lot, and I was just feeling very burnt out by the whole thing. And I felt like you know I wasn't really going to college per se. I, I was just it was basically like high school, but really far away, as far as that goes. And, you know, for me, it's almost the opposite of what I'm going through with college as of late, which was, you know, instead of me feeling like the old guy in the room, I felt like the young guy in the room because a lot of people that were going to IT Tech had tried college before and due to whatever circumstance they had, financial, family, uh, whatever, um, they, you know, dropped out and they're just now picking it back up again so they can get a degree, get a better job, to provide for themselves, their family, stuff like that. So they were coming into college at a later later time in their life. So it was more around when I'm going back to college, actually. So they were, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s, some of them. And I was traditional college age, you know, 18, 19. And, you know, it's just... I liked hanging out with them because they were kind of, you know, pretty even keel. They weren't all bro -y and stuff. And, you know, it being a tech school, um, everybody was kind of nerdy as well. So I kind of got along with, uh, with that group of people. Um, but as far as the curriculum goes, they were starting up uh, online classes at the time. And, um, you know, keep in mind this was early 2000s. It's not like it is today where they've since you know, smoothed out a lot of the, the rough edges as far as, you know, taking online classes goes. Because, like, if you had any kind of question on an assignment, something that would be really simple to answer for a teacher, you know, you had to send them an email or check the message boards at a certain time. And a lot of times the professor, professors would be uh, in another time zone for me. And... You know, like I said, I was working nearly full-time at McDonald's, so, you know, if I wasn't in school, I was pretty much at work, and, you know, I, I didn't have time to kind of sit there on the forums at 6 p.m. or something like that, you know, to have my question answered, so I would just basically just say fuck it and not do the online assignments, and obviously grades started to, uh, to go down, and, uh, Eventually, ITT Tech addressed the issue, not with me specifically, but with uh, other students as well, because it wasn't just a me thing. Um, a lot of students, you know, were having problems with, you know, getting in touch with their instructors and submitting assignments and all sorts of other technical stuff. Like I said, it was the early 2000s, and, um, you know, online learning was just starting to become a thing. I think that was around the time when University of Phoenix was coming around, I remember those commercials probably back, probably as far back as like 2002. That's the earliest I can remember. They might have even been around before then, but as far as the whole taking college courses online thing, that was a new thing at the time. Now it's pretty commonplace. I mean, hell, even like middle school and high school, they have some kind of online module. You know, I remember. You know, my brother Raj, when he was going to high school, he would have to do some kind of online module, you know, whether it's submitting assignments or doing reading or something like that. So, you know, they've since come a long way from when I was in, in college. But point being, um, it didn't do so hot at IT Tech because of the, the online courses. And I was feeling really burnt out with uh, basically being full-time at McDonald's and going full-time to college which, you know, I was really young at the time and didn't know how to manage my time like I do now, at least better than I did, de did then. Um, and, you know, I remember having to take uh, a night course as well because, like I said, with um, the whole online thing, 
ITT Tech eventually addressed it by starting up hybrid courses, which is kind of what a lot of online course online classes are today, where like you go to a physical class to uh, basically you know make your presence known, and if you have any questions for the teachers or something like that, you can ask them there in person without having to wait for a specific time on a message board or send out an email that may or may not get answered for a couple days and meanwhile you you know you're gonna be late on the assignment um, and it was a pretty good idea actually and should have been something that they started off with in the beginning I think um, but point being um, I had to take that at night and because I drove you know from Saline Ohio to Dayton twice sometimes three days a week depending on the quarter um, I didn't want to put more wear and tear in my car by driving back home only a couple hours later to drive all the way back again you know so uh, my best friend Eric also known as the Talking Vidalkin online was going to undergrad school at the time uh, he was going to Urbana University in Urbana Ohio and so in between classes for me um, while waiting for the night class to start, I'd just go visit him at Urbana because it was a lot closer and I had something to do in between, you know, <laughs> while I was waiting for my classes to start. So I'd hang out with him, hang out with his friends, and, you know, we became friends too. And I became friends with his friends as well. And uh, I just, I really liked the vibe of the area. You know, it was a lot like Salina, but it was bigger, it had more stuff to do. And, you know, more importantly, it was closer to a lot of the bigger cities. It was really close to Dayton, uh, Springfield. It was pretty close to Columbus as well. So, you know, if we wanted to go out and do something, we were all pretty close by to a lot of the big urban areas in Ohio. So we weren't really too, uh, too short on, on things to do out there. Um, I guess the main thing was just having the money to do it, of course, because, you know, broke college student, but, you know, that's just life. Um, but in any event, um, I was really liking the vibe of the area, and, you know, I, I'd wanted to transfer to a four-year university anyway. You know, I figured I'd just get my degree at IC Tech and then transfer over to a four-year university where I only have to do two years and then get my bachelor's degree, but... I was just liking the environment so much out there. Let's see. Where are we at phone charging wise? Okay, hold on. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Uh, I still got a ways, especially since I'm streaming. So, anyway. Um, but yeah, I was just feeling, you know, I really liked, you know, that area a lot. And, you know, my friends were out there. So that, that helped. Uh, I just decided to transfer over to Urbana University and uh, started up uh, fall semester 2006. And that was, that first semester was probably one of the best times of my life because it was the first time I had actually gotten a taste of what it was like to be an adult, you know, just freedom from, you know, my parents or relatives or anything like that. I got a chance to, to just be me and it was such a freeing experience. I'll never forget the amount of joy and just relief that I felt um, the day that they helped me move in. Um, you know, I got all my stuff in the dorms and, uh, you know, we played some pool at the uh, student center. And then when it was time for friction issues. Okay, anyway, <laughs> sorry for the recon thing. Anyway, as they were finally pulling out, um, out of sight that was the moment where it all hit me just the freedom it's like I can do whatever the fuck I want right now <laughs> I don't have to worry about coming home at a certain time or making sure I'm up at a certain time to let the dogs out or you know mow the yard or clean up dog crap or do any of this other stuff that I was doing or even go to work at McDonald's, you know, I didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, you know, I was living in the dorms at the time, like I said, so I also had, um, was eating at the, uh, the cafeteria there at Urbana, so I didn't have to worry about food or living anything, you know, just, you know, 
and I even got a job at the uh, the cafeteria just to give myself a little bit of pocket change for okay anyway so I, I gave up my car which I was leasing at the time um, because I, I knew I wasn't gonna work a full-time job while I was at you know Urbana I wanted to make sure that I did it right and I didn't have to worry about distractions from a full-time job or a nearly full-time job so you know quit my job Gave back the car, which uh, in retrospect probably wasn't a good thing <laughs> um, because it really adversely affected my credit for the longest time. Now, I've since paid off the car, so it's fine now, but uh, you know, it definitely affected me for a while, uh, credit wise. So, um, just looking at all the kids coming in, we just had a bus coming to McDonald's, so all the kids are getting on the bus in any event. Um, so I went there. That first semester was the best for me because it was my first experience of adult life and just being on my own and not having to worry about, you know, living up to anybody's expectations except my own. I just be my own person for the most part. And uh, I loved it. But at the same time, I didn't know how to deal with living by myself. So. I spent more time, you know, hanging out with my friends and goofing off and stuff than I did actually doing homework and studying for tests and stuff like that. So, needless to say, my grades weren't the best, and I got put on academic uh, suspension, probation, later on. Um, so I ended up having to file an appeal letter saying, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, low grades and stuff. I, you know, it's my first time being on, on my own. And, you know, it's hard for me to deal with that sort of thing, but, um, you know, I'm going to work to improve myself and to, uh, you know, do better in, in school and stuff. And, you know, I was really anxious during that whole winter break when I went back home because the, they sent the letter over there and my folks found out and it was just a whole thing. And, uh, yeah, um, that didn't go over so well with them either. Um, but, you know, I made the, uh, conscious choice to, uh, to do better in school. And for the first half of the next semester, I did. Like, I went to every class, didn't skip a one, um, studied for tests, did well, turned in homework, and was doing just exceptionally well. But, um, at the time, that was around the time where, uh, my stepdad and my mom married, so... Um, whereas before, uh, from a financial aid standpoint, I had to uh, only list my mom as an income source because she wasn't married at the time, so you know I only really had to use her. But then when she married my stepdad, I had to count both of their incomes into the equation, and collectively they made an, you know enough to disqualify me from a lot of the grants and stuff I was getting but they weren't really making enough themselves to be able to help me pay for college or at least make adequate enough payments to let them allow me to continue going to college. So I was stuck between a rock and a hard place because I knew like even if I continued to work my ass off that semester it wouldn't matter because I wouldn't be able to uh, to continue going um, and I just felt really defeated because you know I put forth this concerted effort to to do well in school but because of financial aid situations you know it didn't matter if I did well or if I just gave up entirely so I fell into a, a pretty bad a pretty bad slump at that time and I think it was my first experience with uh, with real depression you know I'd felt sad before but you know get over it within a couple of days but that was my first like legit experience with depression and you know I'd stay in my room pretty much all day stay in bed um, I'd only get up to like look at stuff on the computer go to the bathroom uh, and then just eat I wouldn't even talk to my friends or anything <laughs> like I just I was in such a bad bad state you know um, some days would be a little better where I'd hang out with them a little bit, but I was just so overcome with with 
depression and everything else. And, uh, you know, I, I just felt so utterly needed. It's like, what did I put all this hard work into for? You know, because I wanted to, to do good and continue on through college. But because of financial aid stuff, I won't be able to. So um, eventually... Um, the end of the semester came and I was just so ashamed of, of everything that I ended up moving in with, uh, with my cousins. Uh, they were living in cold water at the time and, uh, it was just such a rough period for me. Um, I'm just gonna unplug the phone. Hold on. Cause I'm getting a little tired of the noise here. But anyway, uh, moved in with my cousins. They were living in cold water at the time, like I said. And um, just trying to figure out what do I do <laughs> next in life. Um, and that was, you know, those three years, I'd say, were a pretty dark period for me because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. You know, I knew I wanted to get back to college as soon as possible so I could graduate, get my degree, and, you know, get a job so I could get the hell out of that part of Ohio because I felt like it was just kind of a dead end for me. And, you know, even all these years later, I still feel like that. You know, like I said, it's, excuse me, it's a nice place to visit. I just don't want to stay here long term, you know. Um, and, uh, like I said, still feel that way. Um, and then, you know, as you guys know, I eventually um, joined the U.S. Navy in 2010 and set off on a journey that, you know, literally changed my life. Um, you know, it gave me, gave me the opportunity to go back to school again. And it gave me a whole new perspective on the world. Um, it wasn't always positive. There was a lot of real negative moments during my time in the service. Um, a lot of, you know, especially being overseas, just the frantic work schedule. Um, I developed a lot of anxiety issues, a lot of, you know, I've had panic attacks and, you know, it hasn't been easy, you know, even since I got out, I still go through some, some panic issues. Um, it's not as, not as much as it was when I was in, but, uh, you know, still some of the, some of the memories, you know, just kind of remain and, uh, you know, it's hard to get over stuff like that. You know, it's it's not easy. And, uh, you know, some days are better than others. Some days I don't even think about it at all. And then there's others where, um, you know, I can't even get out of bed. Can't even leave my couch. You know, there's days like that when I was in, in, in school. And it was, it was really tough, you know. Uh, but <laughs> didn't mean to... To open up this much uh, during this live stream see see what I said about making it a quick update video it's like nearly a half hour what the fuck <laughs> and we ain't even have breakfast yet can I get a hello there <laughs> Been watching some infinite waters uh, it's a good good little motivational channel just to help you feel good about life even for just a couple moments um, definitely recommend subscribing to him giving him a watch some of his stuff's a little corny and kind of cheesy with his, uh, his catchphrases and stuff. But, I don't know, it's kind of comforting in a way. So, but in any event, let's kind of wrap this up a little bit. So, you know, did the whole Navy thing. Got out in 2015. Uh, went back to school 2016, nearly a decade after, you know, I started school at uh, Urbana. And... Uh, you know, had some issues with the original major that I was in. Um, it just didn't really suit me anymore. So my grades weren't the best because a lot of the classes were a little too hard for me. <laughs> and I wasn't used to that. I, I didn't have that student mindset at the time. So it was just a lot of readjustment going on in my life at once. And I had to, like, deal with it, you know. Uh, so didn't do so hot the first semester. Decided to switch majors. Um, to film production, I might have, I think I did the management information systems for like 
maybe a semester or two. I, I forget. But in any event, I ended up uh, switching majors and uh, did a lot better. But then a lot of the uh, depression, anxiety, and stuff started kicking in. And that's when things started uh, going a little downhill for me. Because, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, because I had, I had the time to, to mentally unpack a lot of what was going on in here that I just kind of put off to the side because of, you know, we got to do things, you know, when I was in the military, it's like, you can't, you don't have time to dwell on a lot of that stuff. You know, you have to be constantly on all the time. But when you're in college, especially if you're in like a, some kind of fine arts degree or something like that, um, you, you get a lot of free time. I will say that. I think part of the challenge with uh, an arts communication, whatever type of degree, is the discipline to continue to go to classes and stuff because it is, in a lot of cases, it's almost like too easy in, in most cases. Um, not all the classes are super easy, but you know, you have to have the discipline to go to them all the time and to do the homework and all that kind of stuff because, you know, in a lot of ways it seems, like I said, just too easy and you're just like, eh, whatever, I'll just wing it, it's fine. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's part of the discipline, <laughs> I guess, that I'd, I'd lost when I got out of the military. Um, but, like I said, the main contributor to my failings then was dealing with a lot of the depression and anxiety uh, from my military life and uh, I had time to unpack it so you know it was really difficult for me to deal with especially since I didn't have a good local support network I think if I had a good local amount of friends and stuff to talk to about these things even if it was just a go on a short little rant about it I think it would have done a lot better and gotten over it you know a lot faster but you know still was of that I can fucking do this and I can charge forward and I don't need no help and all this kind of stuff and when I did reach out for help uh, the help wasn't really adequate I felt uh, it was just basically you know, best case scenario is just somebody to talk to. That was it. Which, you know, it did help, but it didn't really give me any kind of solution, things I could work on to, to help, help allevi alleviate my, uh, my feelings of anxiety and stuff, or at least give me some, some kind of step to, uh, to move forward. Um, it was just basically a soundboard for me to talk about stuff and you know it just it wasn't really well equipped for someone like me I don't think you know it was just not the right fit so eventually I decided to transfer over to the community college in Kalamazoo Michigan uh, because you know their program was geared more towards uh, new media like YouTube and stuff versus you know Western which was geared more mostly towards uh, traditional media sorry for the noise that picks up in the mic that's uh, somebody weird whacking so anyway uh, the community college is geared more towards uh, newer media versus traditional media from Western uh, so I went over there really liked it um, but again you know it was just a lot of issues and stuff I was still going through at the time you know, I just was trying to make it work, but, uh, you know, ultimately I came to the conclusion that I just, the area that I was in just wasn't the right fit. You know, I tried to, you know, change my habits and stuff, and that helped. Don't get me wrong, it did help, but uh, I felt that thinking over the situation and everything, I just wasn't in the right environment for me. And, you know, that was something that you know, honestly, I should have looked up before I even applied to Western was the environment and the lack of a local support network or just anybody, really. <laughs> I didn't know anybody in Kalamazoo uh, when I first went out there, so it was a little scary. 
and you know kind of lost my train of thought but uh, in any event um, you know I decided at the end of 2017 I'm just really burnt out and I just I just want to take a break from from school just want to gather myself take a take some time off to kind of figure out the next the next plan you know and uh, also the video editing stuff was going really well for me so that <laughs> that didn't really help uh, academically anyway plus you know not blaming my clients or anything that that's all on me because I didn't uh, manage my time properly and I think you know had I managed my time better you know would have turned out a lot better and now I'm in a much better position with my clients to where I can you know from starting up school or something like that I can tell them you know hey I'm in class most of the week and whatever so you know I won't be able to get stuff out to you as fast as I used to but you know still be willing to work on it and stuff like that and you know it's always good it's a good side hustle want to build it into something more and I felt like you know we're definitely getting there so, um, you know, that, yeah, uh, <laughs> words, um, but I decided to just kind of get out the rest of my lease because I talked with my folks and they were starting up a production company of their own here in Wapak and they needed some help. So I figured you know, it just kind of worked out that way where, you know, I want to take a break from school for a little bit to kind of figure myself out give myself a break to get my head on, head on straight and uh, you know help them out with their production company whatever else and so I just stayed the rest of my lease my apartment just worked at McDonald's to help cover rent and stuff and then you know once my lease was up I just moved back here and uh, you know it's had its own you know highs and lows um, and uh, you know, it's not easy for me making money out here because there's not a lot of job opportunities out here as there are in the, the bigger cities. And of the job opportunities that are around here, they don't really pay a whole lot. So you have to make do with what you have. And uh, trying to work more with uh, doing freelance stuff kind of help cover some other expenses and save up and all this other stuff, which basically leads me to... Um, you know like where we're going and uh, you know the main thing is um, I gotta take some water there's a spuck right now but anyway uh, the main thing is that um, you know I do want to go back to school and I do want to get my degree and I want to make this work so I can go to Japan and uh, get a job and just you know live out there I don't know if I'm gonna live out there like for the rest of my life you know <laughs> like some people ask you know are you gonna die in Japan um, I don't know you know I don't know how long I want to live out there for you know I might only be out there for a couple of years before I decide to come back to the States but in any event I do want to make a good go of it living out there and I really enjoyed my time when I was stationed out in Yokosuka as far as, you know, being out and about in Japan. Not so much the, uh, the work, not so much the work, work life. That was, uh, that was not a fun time, but the other stuff was pretty good. And I want to do more of it, and especially now since I'm no longer in the military, I don't have to worry about a lot of the restrictions that I had being a member of 7th Fleet out there. So, that's nice. <laughs> I can just do whatever I want, you know, within within legal limitations, of course. But uh, you know, I'm a lot more free to do what I want than I was before. Ugh. And I'll actually be living in Tokyo versus you know just visiting for the weekends. So I'll be able to explore Tokyo a lot more, be able to network with more people, be able to do more with uh, my current video editing clients as well. You know, whether it's being, you know. A second cameraman just an extra pair of hands to help with uh, camera angles and stuff whatever the case 
um, you know, <laughs> it's always good to, to be able to help out and stuff and uh, do collabs and everything to help my own channels out. But, you know, I definitely feel, feel very positive about going back to Japan. And, uh, you know, the thing is, some, you know, a lot of times these things take time. So it's not, you know, not going to be an overnight thing where I'm all of a sudden in Japan. You know, this has been several years in the making, you know. <laughs> so you just got to have patience, you know. It's something I've learned, you know, watching, watching guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, you're always talking about patience and setting yourself up for success. And that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. Like a lot of people might think that, you know, I should just directly apply to these universities and come back to Japan as fast as I can. And don't get me wrong, I'd fucking love to be there at like the start of 2019. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. But I gotta put myself in a position to win. And I feel like I need to go to community college first, get some, you know, some credits under my belt, get some uh you know some good grades and everything set up so that way i can show to the universities i'm applying to overseas that you know i'm doing good and uh i want to do good things out in japan and also you know prove to myself that i can do it because like i said i've gone through a lot of failures in school and you know i'm I'm not getting any younger, you know, I'm 32, 32, what you gonna do? So, uh, I gotta, gotta really make this count because, uh, you know, I want to finally, finally get that paper. And even if the paper doesn't lead to jobs or anything, at least I can kind of sit back and say that I fucking, I fucking got the paper. It took me forever to do it, but I finally, I finally finished what I started. Just, you know, sometimes it takes a minute. <laughs> and you just got to have patience and perseverance and uh, determination to uh, to make it happen, you know. And uh, that's, about, that's about all I want to say in this video. We've covered, I think we've covered a lot of ground in this live stream. It's definitely, definitely helped me, helped me out kind of, you know, on air or to air out some uh, some stuff that I've been keeping in for a while. So if this seems kind of like a random ranty, whatever, um, you know, <laughs> kind of is what it is. But it's definitely helped me out and um, helped me air these thoughts and stuff. So at nearly 45 minutes in, I think we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap things up here. So. Um, this is a quick little recap, um, looking at local community colleges here in Ohio to uh, get some credits and boost my GPA up a little bit before I apply to some schools overseas in Japan. I'm um, looking at applying at Lakeland University and uh, Temple as well, depending on GPA and stuff. But uh, most likely just going to apply to Lakeland, actually. Uh, maybe transfer to Temple later. but. Uh, I think we'll just apply to Lakeland for now and get that going and uh, you know start my new life in Japan as a as a uh, not a foreign exchange student but as a study abroad student veteran whatever whatever all labels you want to want to put on the thing um, just go back to Japan and start my new life out there you know being out and about in Tokyo especially is gonna be a blast um, I can't wait to go back out there, see my friends out there, see some of the places I saw during the first run of Andy Japandi. Um, I, I so cannot wait to start up season two of Andy Japandi. Um, I had a lot of fun making the first season. Um, looking back on it though, some of the videos were, you know, kind of so-so quality. But you know, that was nearly four or five years ago. <laughs> looking back on it now, and I've since improved myself as an editor. And I'm willing to put in more, more effort into my videos now versus then, um, and I just can't wait to go back out there and make some videos in the old Yaban. So anyway, that said, guys, this is the Andy San.
time for now. Thanking you guys for tuning into this really long ass live stream that's just recently passed the 45 minute mark. And I want to thank you guys for watching my other stuff and being patient with me uh, with the um, archive updates from, you know, my archive <laughs> from on this channel. I know there's not a lot of people that like the older videos, but again, it's it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the journey. And it gives you guys a chance to see some of the older stuff that, you know, depending on when you start following me, you may, may not have seen. So... For better or worse, again, if anything, I'm doing it to show off my progress as a filmmaker, as a YouTuber, whatever else, even just as a person, because, you know, I'm way different now than I was back then, and, you know, even I see it in some of uh, some of these recent uh, archive updates. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and as always, see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.